And now on to the more interesting, crazy of the conspiracies for which people will be upset because we're not conspiratorial enough. Yes. First. One person. Yeah. First. Whatever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Evidence of ancient rainforests found in Antarctica. What? This is awesome. This is from April 1st. It's from today. What? And it's from the most credible source, the most trusted name in news, CNN, which so, means it must be true. Okay, so it's Conspiracy not- Conspiracy confirmed. It's not an it's April not Fool's an April thing. Fool's <laughs> joke. I don't know. Just check in. Yeah, because I was looking for news today, and I'm like, man, oh, how man. do I know if Nervous. anything is real today? Because yeah. oh, everyone just goes The nuts. worst day in the world, man. I know. It, it sucks. Worse than tax So day. the story itself, we have this medium post showing Admiral Byrd's flight, 1947, where apparently you can go into the center of the earth from the north and south poles. What? And there's uh, um, Agharta. Oh, cool. The land of advanced races, a central sun, which kind of makes the earth seem like a Dyson sphere of some mm -hmm. sort. And then the city of Shambhala. But we'll talk about this. The first thing I do want to highlight is that the story is basically that this dude, or what I was told, goes down to Antarctica and finds like lizard people and fights them or something. But we have the story about- And how, wins? Come on. Really? I don't know. Or runs away. Okay. But this is a story from CNN about there there were ancient rainforests found in Antarctica. And it's interesting enough. Let's read a little bit of the, the real news and then go on a fantastical voyage. Yes. They say when dinosaurs roamed the Earth 90 million years ago, the planet was much warmer, including Antarctica at the South Pole. But in a surprising twist, researchers have discovered evidence that Antarctica also supported a swampy rainforest at the time, according to a new study. Researchers captured a slice of the sea floor using a drill rig aboard a polar research vessel on West Antarctica's Am Amudsden Sea between February and March 2017. The sediment core sample was taken near the Pine Island and Thwaites glaciers. CT scans of the sediment core revealed pristine samples of forest soil, pollen, spores, and even root systems so well preserved that they could identify cell structures. The soil included examples of pollen from the first flower flowering plants found this close to the South Pole. Wow, Very that's cool. incredible. Very cool. They dated the soil, its fine-grained clay, and slit to 90 million years and silt to 90 million years ago. Their study published Wednesday in the journal Nature. During the initial ship shipboard assessments, the unusual coloration of the sediment layer quickly caught our attention. It clearly differed from the layers above it, said Johan Klagis, study author and geologist at the Alfred Wegener Institute. We had found a layer originally formed on land, not in the ocean. Scientists know that during the age of the dinosaurs, conditions were warmer. The mid-Cretaceous uh, era, from 80 million to 150 million years ago, was the warmest period for Earth in the past 140 million years, the researchers said. The surface of the sea likely reached 90. This, whoa! The surface of the sea likely reached 95 degrees Fahrenheit in tropical areas, and the sea level was 558 feet higher than it is now. Wow! Yeah, seriously. But there has been no evidence about what conditions were like in the South Pole. This is the southmost sample of the Cretaceous period collected so far, revealing what Antarctica was like between 83 and 93 million years ago. Conspiracy time. Yes. What if there is an ancient race that once inhabited these, these foresty areas 80 to 150 million years ago, intelligent dinosaur-like creatures, hmm. and they struggled to survive in the pits of the, the caves of Antarctica and went to battle with... Admiral Richard Byrd. I, I don't know if that has anything to do with Admiral <laughs> Richard Byrd or anything. I love it. Continue. But there's this medium post. So this is the first thing, admittedly, like one of the first things that comes up when you search for Admiral Byrd and like fighting lizard people and stuff. Yes. It's uh, the strange hollow earth case of Admiral Richard Byrd. It's a medium post. So it's from Alexandria Duxworth. I don't know who that is or whether she's credible or not. But let's, uh, let's read the story of hollow earth. She writes, Medal of Honor recipient Admiral Richard E. Byrd allegedly wrote his encounter with a lost civilization in Antarctica. According to hollow earth theorists, Bird met ancient race underground in the South Pole. How was this left out from Bird's mission, Operation High Jump? Could it be one big hoax conspiracy theorists love to fantasize? According to Bird's diary, the government ordered Bird to remain silent for what he witnessed during his Antarctic assignment. March 11th, 1947, quote, I have just attended a staff meeting at the Pentagon. I have stated fully my discovery and the message from the master. All is duly recorded. The president has been advised. I am now detained for several hours, six hours, 39 minutes to be exact. I am interviewed intently by top security forces and a medical team. It was an ordeal. Four exclamation points. Four exclamation points. I am placed under strict control via the national security provisions of the United States of America. I am ordered to remain silent in regard to all that I have learned on the behalf of humanity. Incredible. In, in all caps. All, all caps, caps. Three exclamation oh, that, That's points. how you know it's serious. Yeah. 
I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey orders. Now, now here's the question I have. Is it, if this is real, did they write in all caps in books? Like before the internet? I don't know. Or is that an internet thing that someone, no. like kind of a wink wink at the audience? Like, they did OMG before there were computers in like the 1700s. They did? Yeah, they did. I saw it. Oh, wow. Yeah. After many polar accomplishments, Byrd organized Operation High Jump in 1947. The objective, construct an American training and research facility in the South Pole. I mean, that's cool. A simple military task, right? Some say the American government sent their troops to the South Pole for any evidence of the rumored German base 211. Nazis were fascinated with anything regarding the Aryan race. They traveled all over the world, including Antarctica, to learn more of alleged origins. The Germans did make their mark in the South Pole. However, what they have discovered doesn't compare, doesn't compare to what Byrd recorded in his diary. Agartha, Antarctica's secret. So there's a there's a, there's a flying saucer to Venus apparently. <laughs> there's uh, uh How did he know that's where it was going? Did he draw this? Oh wait, yeah, what is this from anyway? I don't know, Big this Think. Is, this isn't from uh, the Insi- same person, huh? Inside the Hollow Earth via Big Think. I don't know. Okay. Oh, cool. We'll open this one. We'll see what this is. That's so cool. Center of of gravity 400 miles down and then what? You can go inside and walk like normal or something? The sun in the middle of it? There's a sun in there. Shambhala. Cool. You know, one of the earliest movies I ever remember seeing, I don't remember how old I was. I must have been like three or four. But I was at my grandma's house, and it was Journey to the Center of the Earth. Yeah. And I remember it being so epic. Like, I was just like, I want to I wanna be that scientist that, like, discovers the the lizards. They find <laughs> They find, like, dinosaurs, massive, huge mushrooms that are, like, as big bigger than houses and I, I just i thought that was so cool I mean, I mean i knew it was not real that's so cool <laughs> well, don't yeah, you want this but it to was be awesome real, it's like my first memory of a movie is that yeah, wouldn't don't you want this to be real kind of yeah, yeah how totally. exciting would that be That'd it would be, be so amazing cool. I, I i know that there's like the saying people say i was born too late to explore the world and too early to explore the stars yeah that's not true it's just people don't want to explore the earth it involves think, a lot of the ocean well they, they right but also what because we have a satellite picture of certain islands or certain areas of like, I don't know, the Yukon. We haven't explored that. Yeah, we haven't gone up there. Yeah. Go, go walk around, go to the go Amazon, on. walk through the jungle, like pe- like you'll find stuff. Hard work. Yep. It's it's crazy. There's, there's probably ancient ruins. We've never, there, there are tribes in the Amazon we've never contacted. Yeah. No, so there's certainly things they probably have. I mean, you can get in trouble if you go do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, they, there's they have this site that I was on and um, it helps you identify grave robbers in like ancient ruins. And cool. I, I don't remember exactly the name of the site. But it was really cool because they basically crowdsourced other people to help them look. They would give you like, you'd see this square of a, and it was a satellite image of a random place in Egypt or South America somewhere, all these different places. And it, it they, they kind of teach you how to look for if someone has been digging, like if it was near like an ancient looking site, you would flag it. And then if enough people flagged it, they would go re- go check it out, and it actually worked. They actually started finding people that were digging in ruins Whoa, and actually cool. taking artifacts out of the ground to try to sell them, nice. like whatever. And uh, I I saw a lot of cool things. Like it was so intriguing just to like see snippets of the Earth, and you'd see what country it is, but that's all it gave you. That's it's wow. like it's cool. this country, so Dude. you'd know it was like these old ancient sites. Well, yeah. well, well, let's keep reading this, but I do yeah. want to mention, I watched this really interesting YouTube video about how they think they found where Atlantis was oh. in the Sahara Desert. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because there used to be coastal. Yeah. And then when it when the, the waters like receded or whatever, it just became a barren wasteland. Yeah. We can talk about that tomorrow. Oh, that's let's, cool. Let's, let's read this. She goes on. For thousands of years, people all over the world have written legends about Agartha, sometimes called Ag- uh, Agartha or Agarthi, the underground city. But did, did Bird find it? He met the master the city's leader who told him of his concerns about the surface world. Quote, Our interest rightly begins just after your race exploded the first atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. It was that alarming time we sent our flying machines, the Flugelrads. (laughs) That sounds like something out of Rick and Morty. Flugelrads? That sounds like something you would come up with. They're powered by plumbuses. Yes, Yes. (laughs) indeed. To your surface world to investigate what your race had done. You see, we had never interfered before in your race's wars and barbarity, but now we must. For you have learned to tamper with a certain power that is not for your man, Mm. mainly that of atomic energy. Our emissaries have already delivered messages to the power of your world, and yet they do not heed. Apparently, the government knew about Agartha before Bird. According to the master, 
Places such as Tibet, the Great Pyramid of Giza, and the North Pole all have tunnels leading to Agartha. What else did the master teach Bird? What about the rest of Operation High Jump Crew? High Jump Crew? Bird didn't uncover the underground world alone. Whether the whole hollow earth story is fact or fiction, it's great to imagine there are still hidden civilizations out there in the world. It is. Aw. It's so, it's so interesting. Well, I tell Wait, you what. Go, go back to the, the image of the Dyson Earth. Dyson yeah. Earth. Do you, <laughs> do you think flat earthers are out there like, oh, I knew it was something. We were, we were, we were close. We no. didn't have no. it exactly, uh -uh. but this is it. No. Somewhere. Look, it's, it's, I mean, it's still a globe, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Somewhere. A bunch of like <laughs> middle-aged dudes in glasses walk into a parking lot with brass knuckles and chains. Yeah. And then across from them comes another bunch of dudes with, you know, middle-aged guys holding flat earth, you know, uh, uh, I'm not going to call it a globe, but models. Yeah. And then they, ah, and they run towards each other and they're, they're fighting, chains are flying, bats are swinging. Someone pulls out a katana. Whoosh, someone's got a pitchfork. It's a Dyson Earth. No, it's flat earth. <laughs> no, it's a Dyson Earth. And there. Yeah. So, uh, inside <laughs> Hollow Earth. Oh, it's the same image, basically. That's yeah. Cool. So, oh, okay. that is cool. yeah. So this is basically, basically the image that goes around. But here's what it, here's what we should do. Well, actually, let me read this. A more recent theory suggests a Hollow Earth inhabited by creatures that fly UFOs across our skies, or by dwarves, dragons, other lost races, or ascended <laughs> masters <laughs> of esoteric wisdom. It's getting further and further down the rabbit wow. hole. Wow. You know what, man? It's just becoming a catch-all for what people want to exist. Or a gar a guard of hole. Agartha, right. Sure. Well, here's the actual uh, Operation, Opera High Operation High Jump. Hmm. The objectives, according to the U.S. Navy report, training personnel and testing equipment in frigid conditions, consolidating and extending the United States sovereignty over the largest uh, practicable area of the Antarctic continent, continent publicly denied as a goal even before the expedition ended, determining the feasibility of establishing, maintaining, and utilizing bases in the Antarctic and investigating possible base sites, Developing techniques for establishing, maintaining, and utilizing air bases on ice with particular attention to later ap applicability of such techniques to operations in interior Greenland, where conditions are comparable to those in the Antar Antarctic. Amplifying existing stores of knowledge, electromagnetic, geological, geographic, hydrographic, and meteorological. Interesting. And supplementary objectives of the Nanook expedition. And I'll tell you what I think happened. If it's true, this Admiral Bird guy said all these things. Isn't it just more likely that the dude had like late onset schizophrenia? Yeah, he that's may have about it. Gotten really cold and had some hypoxia and hallucinated. How many? Know. How yeah. many people were on the mission with him? A like, bunch of other people, I guess. Navy dudes, or yeah, military. Yeah. Dudes. Yeah, but back then it was like, well, I guess it was in the forties. It wasn't that oh, too, too that long, bad. No. Does Wikipedia yeah. talk about it? Okay, here we go. That here, well, let me let me let me zoom out because they do bring it up. They do bring up oh, the yeah. secret land. Ooh. The documentary about the expedition, The Secret Land, was filmed entirely by military photographers and narrated by actors Robert Taylor, Robert Montgomery, and Van Helflin. Oh, so this doesn't have anything to do with, no. with it. No, it's just like, yeah, you go in here and there's nothing fun. You'd think they'd at least mention it, right? Yeah. Because people talk about it. Yeah. I would, I, I, you know, it's a it's a comforting lie. It's, it's, it's fun to imagine and people want something to be more exciting than it really is. I'll tell you what, we're living in history like, you know, our friend over in the Super Chat said. Yeah. We're living it. We're in history isn't, books. Isn't that weird? Because to us, it seems like worrying and kind of yeah. bothersome. History is condensed. Yeah. I so know. in 100 the years, they're going to read the whole whole pandemic is going to be one paragraph. In 2019, you know, this happened. And X then, number of people and died. And then 2021, and moved as they moved on from the pandemic, as result, escalation yeah. with China, you know. Yeah. there And there was a baby blip. There was a baby right. blip. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. And then, as you know, in the 2050s, the, the coronials staged a major uprising. Yeah, they would. They carried the infection and it wiped out the rest of humans or Gosh. whatever. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune in to this channel, subscribe, hit the like button, or check us out on iTunes and Spotify. And we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all in the next episode.